Greetings, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer AME Virtual Church. We are the virtual church serving Christ and the community. We worship each Sunday under the anointed leadership of Pastor Gilbert A. Ruffin, Jr. We are so glad you decided to join us today. So sit back, relax, and prepare your heart and mind to hear a word from the Lord. Welcome to Christ Our Redeemer. Christ our Redeemer. Welcome to Christ our Redeemer. Praise the Lord, Christ our Redeemer. We thank God for this opportunity to worship this Sunday one more time, worship in this virtual space, this virtual place. And we come believing that the Lord has a word for us today that the Lord is going to bless us beyond measure. Uh, We thank God for you this Sunday, and we pray that this message uh, brings some encouragement to you, that this message transforms your thinking, uh, that this message fills you up, frees you. Uh, And and for those who are unsaved, that this message will bring a, a word of salvation to you, one in which you are set free, one in which you are healed and delivered today. We thank God today, and we trust God today that the Holy Spirit will show up and just use me in a a way that he's never used me before, and that the Holy Spirit will show up in the midst of this worship experience, touch you even through the virtual means so that your heart may be made brand new, your mind might be renewed and transformed by God's word today. We thank God for what God is doing in this preacher moment. And we and, and we just thank God for you being here with us to share in this preacher moment. Come on, lift up holy hands and repeat after me, Psalm 27, one. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, come on, bless the Lord in here. Come on, bless the Lord like you know that God has brought you through another week. Bless the Lord, knowing that God has woke you up one more time, that your eyes see the light of day. Bless the Lord in here, knowing that God has blessed you already. Knowing that we are blessed as a people, blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed wherever we go, because God is still in full control. And we thank God for being God and keeping us one more time. Let us pray. God, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you, God, for allowing us to see the light of your day. And God, in spite of all the challenges of our life, lives, in spite of all of our broken pieces, in spite of everything, God, that's going on in our lives, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we have yet another chance, God, to see our way through and to trust you, God, to, to see what you're doing in our lives this day, to hear, God, from you one more time that your word might be a refreshing anointing upon us, upon our ears, upon our hearts, our minds, that our actions and and our bodies might respond, our souls might respond to what you're saying to us today. Now, God, speak as only you can. Bless us as only you can. Keep us as only you can. God, we look forward to your Holy Ghost is showing up in this place in the name of Jesus. Do what you do best. Save, heal, set free, and deliver. And we'll be ever so careful to give your name all of the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, saints, I am Sunday. I pray that you all are blessed. We're coming off of a a, a busy week. Uh, It's been last Sunday was Super Bowl and uh, then in the midst of the week, it, it was Valentine's Day, which happens to also be Founders Day for the AME Church. And then uh, we celebrated this week with the second in the Second Episcopal District over at Reed Temple. Uh, we we blessed the Lord as we celebrated Founders Day and the midwinter meeting. Uh, all kinds of the business of the church, all kinds of preach word came forth. Just being able to fellowship one with another was a blessing. So it's been a busy week. It's been a blessed week. And we pray that your week has been blessed as well. My son, Justin, is going to come now to formally welcome all of our uh, members as well as our visitors. Come on, son. Praise the Lord, saints. We greet you in the name of Jesus and welcome you to Christ our Redeemer, 
AME Virtual Church, where we are committed to serving Christ and the community. We worship here every Sunday at 10 a.m. We have Transformational Wisdom Wednesdays every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Facebook Live. We are thrilled that you've decided to join us to hear a word from the Lord, and we pray that you'll consider joining Christ Our Redeemer AME Church when the invitation to Christ is given. Please be sure to share this service on your social networking platforms and invite your friends and family to join us here each and every Sunday. God bless each of you today. Well, thank you, Justin, so very much. Again, I, I always say this, and I, and I really do mean it, and I pray that you receive it in this way, and I pray that all who hear it receive it in this, in this way as well. It is truly a pleasure, and it's truly, I am uh, uh, happy. I am filled with joy and, and praise to the Lord for you serving with me here at Christ Our Redeemer, doing what you do to make this service come together, even in the welcome of visitors. So thank you so very much, son. At this time, I'm going to lift up our announcement for this week. Uh, last week, we were supposed to have this particular financial topic, but we were unable to due to sickness. So our guest uh, speaker this week uh, is back with us or will be back with us this Wednesday as we talk about building net worth. And that's Brother Derek Parker. We are looking forward to him being with us. We're looking forward to hearing what he has to share with us on this financial topic. It's going to be a blessing. You don't want to miss this. This is an opportunity for you to hear free advice, Not, nothing specific as far as financials, but just foundational advice as far as building net worth uh, and how you can do so. Uh, how many of you know that uh, some of our communities, black and brown communities, and even poor white communities struggle with building net worth? So we pray that you are uh, come on board this Wednesday and hear what Brother Parker has to share as he blesses us at 7 p.m. this Wednesday on our Facebook page. Please be sure to like and uh, share this message of uh, this topic discussion and uh, be sure to follow our page as well. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you again. Well, it is offering time. <laughs> That's right, it is offering time. It is time to give God praise through our tithe and offering, our tithes and offering, and it is a blessing to be able to give. Don't you know that you can't be God-giving? I always say it, this is a worship moment. This is a time for us to remember all that God has done for us and to give back into God's church so that there will be resources, meat, as the Bible says, in God's house resources for our community. And here at Christ our Redeemer, we are blessed that you're sowing into fertile ground. This is ground that is brand new and unique in that it, there's no major expense associated with a physical plant or building that the majority of the tithes and offerings given here can be sown right back into the community. They can be blessed by the Lord 30, 60, 100 fold, and we can put them to work right back in our communities uh, as we share with uh, people in need, either through uh, purchasing clothing, coats during the winter months, uh, food. Uh, we, we partner with James Madison Middle School uh, in our public education or in the public arena to help students there. So your tithes and offerings are a blessing to the community. They're a blessing to Christ as we share with individuals uh, that, that is coming from Christ our Redeemer and the church because of the love of God, but also it's a blessing to the community as they receive that love. So we thank God for your giving. You can give one of four ways today. You can give by Cash App. You can give by Givelify, by Tidely, or the United States Postal Service. You should see our electronic handles on the screen now, as well as our mailing address. We thank God for your giving. You can even go to our website, the Christ our Redeemer uh, AME Church website, and you can click on the giving button there, and all of the aforementioned ways of giving will be uh, shown there to you so that you can click there and give as well. So we thank God for your giving. We thank God for your giving. We thank God for your giving. Let us have a word of prayer over the offering. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for those who are blessed to be able to give. God, it is through your blessing. God, that we're able to give back unto your church, unto your, to your people, to your community, God. We thank you, God, for all that you give us. And we thank you, God, that you give us enough sense, God, to give back into the community, back into those who are in need, those who are oppressed, those who are poor, widows and orphans, those who are in prison, 
God, you bless us to be a blessing to them. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would bless the givers. Bless the tithes and offerings multiplied in 30, 60, 100 fold, God, that they might be used for the uplifting of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Saints, it is time for our scriptural reading. Our scriptural reading comes from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and it's just one verse today. That is verse 7. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And I'll be reading for your hearing from the New Living Translation. And the word reads. We now have this light in our shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. After our sermonic selection, come journey with me as I preach from the sermon title, Broken Pieces, Broken Pieces. Come on, Sister Sidibay. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me. And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am. No fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand. Now I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my head, now I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold turn me no mountain can stop me cause you hold my hand yes you know my name you know my name
Well, thank you once again, our Sister Sidibe, for your gifts and talents and, and how you use them here at Christ our Redeemer. What a blessing it is to hear your voice each and every Sunday as you lift up the sermonic selection, easing the way for the word to come. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, saints, it is preaching time, and we do believe that there is a word from the Lord. We thank God for this opportunity to uh, stand behind this sacred desk once again and preach what thus saith the Lord. Let us pray. God, we lift up your name today, and we thank you, God, for this opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus and to lift up your word. God, we're trusting and believing you today that you're going to speak to and through me with your by the power of your Holy Ghost, God so that your people might be blessed. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, use me in a way, God, that you've never used me before, that someone's life might be changed. Someone might be healed. Someone might rededicate their faith. Someone might join your church today, the community of believers. And most of all, God, that your, the kingdom of heaven would be advanced here on earth this day. In the name of Jesus, God, this is my prayer. And in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Broken pieces. Broken pieces. This second letter to the church at Corinth from Paul is amazing in its context. It talks about uh, God's plans for us. It talks about how God is using us, the church, uh, and uh, it, it really seems to focus more on the ministers of the new covenant, but I want today to uh, us to understand that that, that that is literally all of us, not just those who stand behind a sacred desk and preach the gospel, but those who carry the message of the gospel out into the community day by day, and wherever they go, in their workplaces, in their homes, uh, as we go about our business each and every day that we share this good news, uh, if nothing else, through the representation of Christ in us. And that's what today's text is talking about. It, it's talking about this treasure that we have. And I thank God for the opportunity to lift up this word to you today and and how important it is for us to remember what God is doing in our lives. It, it is a blessing to be able to uh, bring this message again after such a wonderful week. Uh, but for some, this week may have been challenging. <laughs> Maybe last Sunday you were hyped about the Super Bowl, thinking that your team was going to win, and they didn't. And so maybe, just maybe, you were a little disappointed by that. Uh, maybe uh, you were expecting something wonderful to happen during the Valentine's Day celebration uh, or, or Valentine's Day, which we celebrate love, if you will, <laughs> on that special day. We're showing our loved one that we love them based on uh, this capitalistic idea uh, that we should be showing love just that day for some reason specifically that we should buy flowers, candy. You should do that every day for the person that you love. Um, but maybe you've had a disappointing Valentine's Day, or maybe you didn't feel the love of someone else during this Valentine's Day. Uh, or maybe, just maybe, you had a, a, a tough week at work, uh, and maybe it's been a, a long week for you, and you've had some ups and downs uh, during the week. Or maybe you've had some general disappointments or ups and downs in your life this week. It may be that you struggle this week with understanding what God is calling you to do, or maybe you struggle this week in in, in um, finding some contentment in your life, or finding some peace in your life, or finding some joy in your life, and maybe it was just a little uh, challenging for you this week as you reflected on your life and felt like something was missing. Well, I've got good news for you today. The Lord is sharing hope with us today in this sermonic text. The Lord is sharing hope here in 2 Corinthians and is blessing us through this text. God is sharing with us uh, through this sacred text the secret to contentment. God is sharing with us that we can come 
and, and, and as we are, and be mended and molded and shaped into what God is calling us to be, shaped into what God would have us to be, shaped into that which God would use and show his perfect treasure through, show his power through. Maybe that's you, and this is good news today that God, we receive this great treasure from God. And, and, and this treasure of God's power is at work in us and will help us to endure, never to give up. That's good news. This word begins in the text uh, by saying that we are like fragile clay jars, as it reads in the New Living Translation. Uh, the King James Version, I believe, says earthen vessels. But Regardless of how it reads, it's pretty clear that we are fragile, that we, 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 we come with some fragility. We come with some pieces, in other words. We come with some broken pieces that maybe have been, that have been mended back together, shaped and fashioned, yet fragile because of the cracks, because of the flaws, because of the shortcomings, because of the fragility of our humanity and our humanness, our flesh, if you will. Yet, God is sharing with us today that we can find contentment through God, even as broken vessels, even as, as fragile clay jars, that we can find contentment, even as imperfect people made up of all of these broken pieces, we can be made whole and content through Christ. In other words, we can find contentment in the Lord. Our lives are a collection of broken pieces, a, a, a collection of past experiences and memories, um, some good and some bad. These broken pieces shape who we are. They sum up who we are. These broken pieces shape our character and our context. They shape how we view the world. And so we've been pieced together. We've been held together by the mercy of God. And we find our contentment in the Lord's saving grace. In spite of all of our misdoings, in spite of all of our pieces, our, we are held together as God forgives us through the light of his love. In spite of all of the challenges and hurts imposed on us by others, forgiveness helps us to move on. But if we're completely honest with ourselves, the memories of those challenges and hurts do rear their ugly head from time to time. It's, it's, it's one thing to forgive. It's a completely different thing to forget. And so we carry the memories of some of these past hurts in our mind. They're resident in our mind. And from time to time, as we're challenged in life, when we go through things in life, from time to time, these memories pop up. These memories raise their ugly head. It's only through God's soothing hand and healing tenderness that we find contentment as the Lord applies this balm upon our hearts, allowing us to live on in spite of the challenges. His balm upon our hearts and soothing our minds and mending and, 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 and patching, if you will, soothing over our broken pieces. Sometimes we receive prayer uh, or, or contentment through prayer and fasting. And how many of you know that there's power in prayer? That when we pray, something happens, God answers, and God can provide contentment through our prayers, as we hear from the Lord, as we're reassured in the Lord, as we pour out to the Lord and the Lord hears our cry, 
and soothes our soul. There's power in prayer. The Bible says the prayer of the righteous availeth much. During this past week, uh, we had a prayer call uh, with some other members and it was pretty clear that the power of prayer, we experienced it firsthand during that prayer call. It, it, it was wonderful. We talked about our Valentine's Day experiences and how as we move through life and mature through life, through all of our brokenness, how we reflect on that day differently. Some just spend quiet time together doing nothing extraordinary because they do something extraordinary every day for their loved one. Some uh, experience the need and go out and enjoy the time together with the spouse uh, or, or, or a friend and uh, love on each other. Amen, somebody. Some of us may spend that time alone reflecting on uh, lost love. And so Valentine's Day can bring up memories. It can bring up challenges. I was sharing um, with the group during this Wednesday's prayer call uh, what we what we experienced firsthand uh, this Valentine's Day as First Lady Hope and I uh, went out and shared and, and attended the uh, Gregory Porter uh, the concert at the Warner Theater in Washington, D.C. And it was a blessing. I mean, this brother is very, very talented, as to say the least. If you've never experienced uh, Gregory Porter I, I, alive, I would tell you to try to experience this for yourself because I, when I say the brother's really, really talented, I mean he is really, really talented. What you hear uh, in, on uh, online through his videos on YouTube or wherever you might see them or on the the radio, on the radio, uh, through satellite channels or whatever it may be, is exactly how he sounds when you go to see him. But the difference is you get to hear the stories behind the song, the stories behind the song. And one song he shared with us, uh, and a very inspirational, uh, Take Me to the Alley. He, in that song, it was clear that God's hand was upon his brother's life as he sang the song and shared with us about God's return. And when God's return, it won't be all of the gilded houses, all of the places of, of worship where we've kind of beautified and looked for his return. It won't be that. He will come to those places and say, take me to the alley. Take me to where those people are who need help. Take me to the afflicted. Take me to the lonely. Those who are there in the alley. Those who need to, who can come to the table, rest in his garden and receive his, his, his pardon. Take me to the alley. And, and so he, he, he blessed us with that song. And then he sang another song in which he reflected about losing a, a, a person that he loved. Losing love um, in, uh, in the song. He, he thought it was initially about the love lost in a relationship that, that where he had been dumped. Amen. And, and, and he came to find out later as he sang the song that literally it was about his brother who passed away from COVID complications in, uh, I believe, May of 2020. And so the story behind the song were powerful. And so I shared this with the group as I was sharing, uh, before we prayed, uh, as I was sharing what, what we did, First Lady Hope and I did doing for Valentine's Day. And at that point, I began to realize um, as he shared with us these stories, no matter how talented you are, no matter how rich you may be, no matter how poor you may be, no, no, no matter where you're from, no matter where you are in life, that we're all just the sum total of our broken pieces. As I shared this with those on the line, my voice began to crack. And I began to realize and, and think about all of my broken pieces. I began to pray to the Lord and seek the Lord about all of my faults, all of my flaws, all of my shortcomings, all of these broken pieces, all of these memories popped up in my head of how good the Lord has been, how good God has been in bringing me through all of these trials and tests, 
all of these situations and how God had shaped me and molded me like a piece of clay, like a fragile clay. And, and, and I began to weep as I prayed. And I, I just share with them how, how great it is to, to be able to be pulled together all of these broken pieces so that we could be content with the treasure of God's light and God's love in us. Oh, what a wonderful thing to say. Oh, what a marvelous thing God has done in shaping and molding us. When we look back over our lives and think things over and think about all the stuff, all of the broken pieces that God has so, so skillfully and wonderfully uh, 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 shaped and continue to shape in our broken vessels, in our clay jars as it says in the text, in our earthen vessels, and, and, and how God continues to shape and mold us and soothes us, that we're carrying this great treasure that soothes our souls inside of us. God's light and love and God's power, the power of God's light and love, that we find contentment through this great treasure that breathes in us in spite of all of our broken pieces we find contentment in the Lord, knowing that God provides us a new way, a new covenant, the Bible says, a new beginning. Contentment and a confidence that gives us a boldness to keep moving forward, a boldness in the newness of life, a boldness that we, 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 we proclaim this good news, this this covenant that we have, that we found in God's light and love, and, and it's inside of us, this great treasure that blesses us. All we have to do is think about our lives. All we have to do is look back over our lives. And this great treasure brings contentment in us. This new relationship, this new, 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 new covenant, this new contentment in Christ. And don't you know that this is a wonderful um, gift, that this is a, a great treasure? This is, this, is, this is a marvelous thing the Lord has done for us. And so as we think about that, we, we, we think about this next point of how we were able to come to God just as we were, that we bring who we are to the Lord. What's it all? Memories of good and bad times. We are but fragile clay vessels in God's hand, continuing to let God be our bomb, continuing to let God be the glue that holds us together. We bring our broken pieces into our workplaces. We show up on Sunday mornings here in virtual worship with our broken pieces. We go into our relationships, our marriages, and, and, and our relation, other types of relationships with these broken pieces, these broken pieces of our imperfections. I was uh, looking at Facebook this week, especially on Valentine's Day. I was going out and sharing with my uh, children, um, praying that they were enjoying their Valentine's Day and sharing with them, you know, uh, what, what, First Lady Hope and I were doing um, and, and how the Lord was blessing us to have a good time uh, at the Gregory Porter show, have dinner, these types of things. And I ran across a Facebook post by Bishop Harry Seawright and it struck me. Uh, Bishop Seawright posted that he and his wife, Dr. Sarita, uh, were celebrating 46 years of Valentine's Day. And, and, and in his post, Bishop Seawright wrote, uh, and I quote, uh, a relationship is two imperfect people who refuse to give up on each other, end quote. Now, as I pondered these words, God shared the message of how he brings our broken pieces together, these fragile clay jars sealed by the covenant of his love, grace and mercy. We bring these broken pieces to God just as we are, allowing God to shape 
and mold us so that we can fit our puzzle pieces together as help meets in Christ. We bring these broken pieces to God just as we are so that we may endure troubles, the, the, the perplexities of life, getting knocked down and, uh, and, and, and hunted down by the adversary and suffering from time to time mentally and physically. Hunted down and, 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 and our bodies giving way, our, our flesh, especially as we get older, our minds and our bodies, aches and pains, starting to break down our bodies. Yet, we, we are not driven to despair. Yet, we're never abandoned. Yet, we're not destroyed. Yet, we continue to serve Christ so that the Jesus in us will be seen and evident in our living, knowing that our suffering is not in vain. We never give up because of our broken pieces. We return to the potter time and time and time again so that he can continue to shape us. He can continue to mold us. He can continue to apply the bomb and be the bomb of Gilead, be the, be the bomb of Upper Marlboro, be, be the bomb of Stafford County, be the bomb in wherever you are that helps your fragile clay pot continue as one in him. Time and time again, blessing us, going to the potter so he can continue to mold us and shape us in his image and in his likeness. Isaiah says, oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. And we all are the work of your hand. Come, we come to the potter just as we are broken and imperfect. And the potter shapes us as it seems best to him, shaping us on the potter's wheel until his treasure and power are evident in spite of our flaws, in spite of our cracks, in spite of the fragility of our clay pots. And this is the message today that we in spite of our broken pieces, God is using us, shaping us, molding us. God has placed something inside of us. The Bible says a, a great treasure inside of us that it might be reflected as we go about our day, as we go about our lives, in our relationships. And, and, and what is this great treasure? And this is our final point today. What is this? great treasure that God has given us, that God has placed inside of us, God's power. It's God's power inside of us that allows us all of these broken pieces to continue, to keep on keeping on, to keep on moving forward, never giving up, never falling uh, falling uh, down and staying down, but getting up time and time and time again. God's power, in spite of all of our broken pieces, in spite of all of our flaws, in spite of all our misdoings and mistakes, God renews us like the earthen vessels that we are, like the fragile clay pots that we are. From the pulpit to the pew, God renews us. God has, has given us this great treasure, this power and work inside of us to show the treasure of God's light and love in us and through us. How else can we explain still being clothed in our right minds? In spite of your mistakes, God's power is at work in you. In spite of your flaws, God's power is still at work in you. It's still evident in spite of your misdoings, God's power is still evident. In spite of all of your body's aches and pains and your, your daily dying, God's power is still 
and work in you. The same light that God spoke in Genesis is at work in you. God's power. This great treasure at work inside of you. Mending all of your broken pieces so that we you, you never give up. God's power is at work inside of you so that you never give in. God's power is there to ensure that you don't give up, that you don't give in. God's power is mending all of your broken pieces and shining through as light and love. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power in spite of your flaws. Power in spite of your shortcomings. Power in spite of your body giving way. Power to keep on keeping up. Power. God's power. That's the treasure that's inside of us. This great treasure and in work inside of us, mending us and mending all of our broken pieces day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Thank God for this great gift, his power. So thank God for this great gift of his power, power to, to shape and renew our minds, to, 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 to fill our hearts with love, Keep on, keep on, keep on. I want to walk right and talk right. I want to share God's love, God's word and God's grace and mercy with others. I want to share God's love with others. I want to be light in darkness. I want to stand boldly and proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Power so that we reflect the God that's in us. Power to keep on keeping on. The same power that got Christ up from the grave, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. It's the same power that's at work in you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for this great thing that God has done. To give us power inside of us. To give us this great treasure inside of our broken pieces. Thank you, Lord that we can boldly proclaim that the best is yet to come because of your power and work in us. The, 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 the Lord be praised today for this great power in us. The Lord be praised today for all that God has done in shaping and molding and continuing to shape and mold these broken pieces. The Lord be praised. The doors of God's church are open. Bring your broken pieces to Christ today. Come now to the potter, knowing that he will shape and mold you, knowing that he will keep you, knowing that he has a great treasure for you in spite of your broken pieces. Come, be made whole today. Don't get on the potter's wheel today and be shaped and molded to what God will call, has, is calling you to be. Give up your life, give your life to Christ today and, 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 and know that God has a great treasure for you. Know that God's power is there and available for you today so you can experience God's power for yourself so that God's power will be evident in your life, not only to you, but especially to others. Come, get your power today. Believe in your heart and confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Believe that God got up from the grave and the same power that got, got, got Jesus up from the grave is the same power at, at work in you. Accept it today. Accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Rededicate your faith. Join the church today. Receive your power so that your broken pieces can be mended, so that you can be made whole, and so that you can reflect the light and love and the power that's at work in you to others, knowing that God is in full control, knowing that God is the part of the shaping your life, knowing that the best is still yet to come because of God's grace and God's mercy. Come on today. Click on the link in, in the comment section. Fill out the information. I'll pray with you. I'll pray that we receive God's power that, that, that you're walking and talking and living it, being it, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Come on right now to Christ. Come on, get this treasure, this gift of God's power 
so that you can keep on keeping on, never giving up and never giving in. Come on now. Click on the link. Look forward to hearing from you. Can't wait. You can also go to a, the Christ Our Redeemer uh, website. And you can click the contact tab there and fill out the information. I will contact you. I will pray with you so that you will receive this power. Power to live right and, 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 and to walk right and talk right in, in Christ. And, and we, we just thank God for this power. We thank God for this great treasure. We thank God for being the potter and shaping us all along the way. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you are the potter and we are the clay, that you continually shape and mold us by the power of your hand, by your grace and your mercy, that your light and your love would shine in us, be evident in us, not for ourselves, but it might be reflected. Your likeness and image might be reflected so that someone else might come to know this great God, that, that we can boldly proclaim that you are God. And, and, and the evidence of it in all of our broken pieces, the broken pieces of our lives. We thank you for those who are coming today to receive this power in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen again. Broken pieces. Hallelujah. Broken pieces that are made whole, mended, shaped, and molded by God's hand. We thank God for today's message. I pray that it reached your ears, hearts, and minds, and that you know that you have power today because God has given it to you. God has continued to keep you in spite of your flaws, in spite of your shortcomings, in spite of all of our shortcomings. God continues to keep us and bless us as only God can as we operate and move and live and have our being in Christ Jesus and through God's power. Let us have our benediction and you can have the rest of your evening back to your day to meditate on this word and to reflect, knowing that God will keep you and bless you and continue to shape and mold you. Let us pray. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling flat on your face and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Enjoy your day. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you.